What's up, guys, and welcome to BitCast, episode 122 for the month of July 2024. I'm your host, Jake Martin, and on the mics, as always, is my good friend and co-host with the most, Landry Smith. What up, Jake? Good to see you, buddy. Hey, man, what's up to you? Good to see you as well. Another month has gone by, and here we are. That's right. A little older, a little wiser. (laughs) A little little older, (laughs) a little wiser, I hope. Hope I don't I don't think I'm doing as much reading these days that's making me wise. Oh man. You might be because you actually read intelligent books. I don't know. I've I've read a lot this year. It's been fun. I think I told you I'm going through the Mistborn trilogy, the Brandon Sanderson. Oh yeah. That's pretty rad. I I've always wanted to read those. I've I've had a couple false starts on those. Well, and then reading is is generous. Audiobooks is the only way I'm able to actually still consume any sort of book content. Dude. Don't beat yourself up over that. I I read a lot of audiobooks. Yeah, is it? Can you call it reading? Is I mean, I guess you just you're, you're listening. You're listening to the audiobook, but I'm I'll yeah. I'm gonna let you talk about Mistborn, and then I'll I'll tell you what I'm doing right now with a book because it's so challenging. But yeah, so I I mean I'm on the third one. I'm almost there. I'm in the home stretch. I'm excited, and um, I can't decide after this. I picked up Stephen King's Fairy Tale. Oh um, man, I've been really interested in that. I love Stephen King. And so, and it's, and it's a physical tales. copy. And I was like, I'm going to read that next, but I, I don't want to stack two fantasy worlds on top of each other. I was like, I don't want to be reading Mistborn and then also be reading this fantasy Stephen King world. Like I think yeah. I'm going to get, get mixed up. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to read that one next. It's but a good strategy. What, but what are you doing? So for the first time in my life, I'm reading a book that's like, it's so challenging that I'm having to listen to the audiobook while I read. Oh, geez. Like I'm doing both at the same time to keep me focused. And also the narrator on the audiobook does a good job of letting you know which character it is. Mm. So I'm reading Infinite Jest, which yep. it's kind of like you kind of have to psych yourself out. Like, no, it's a challenging book <laughs> on the way in. Um, but the rewards are definitely there. It's it's um it is very funny. I love David Foster Wallace nonfiction. His essays are just they're some of the funniest and like heartwarming and, and devastating essays that I've ever read. Um, and his fiction so far, I'm about 200 pages in to infinite jest is similar. Um, but it's also, it's really dark and depressing, man. There's a lot of stuff about, um, uh, addiction and suicide in this book. So I've had to come up for like, just some like fresh air here and there. Like I read Catcher in the Rye. Uh, but just even Catcher like in the week. Rye is not like as uplifting either. It's not. And I, I didn't remember that because I hadn't read it since I was a kid. Um, but it was, it was at least an easy to read book, you know, and it wasn't. Yes. It, it's it, You're dealing with like an angsty teenager who's still struggling with like depression and stuff, but it's nothing like, some of the weighty themes that he's dealing with in infinite jest are so it's like a dystopian novel, you know, like think Mm. 1984, a brave new world, but he was writing in 96 and he's writing about a time where we all have devices in front of our face. And he predicts so many things, right. But in so many weird ways, like he has this concept called video telephony where, um, you know, people talk to each other, uh, face to face and they've, they've created these things called masks, that you put on your face to brighten up all your facial features and hide all the other stuff. So Mm. it's like a physical, uh, analog technology, but you know, it's, it's not, you know, all the streaming stuff's not there. And like, he's more on like a videotape service that has an algorithm that predicts like what you watch and sends you tapes based on your taste. It's so similar to what we have, you know, but it's, Without it's the different. digital interface, yeah, the AI stuff. But his commentaries on our society, you know, and, and our addiction to media and our addiction to screens oh is so pointed and true and it's it's wild. It just makes it makes you think and it's it's very funny, but it's also very devastating and uh mm. it's been a wild ride, man. But it, it the writing is challenging. It's it's very postmodern and there's a lot of different, I mean, I think he's trying to be challenging on purpose and a lot of people probably would, uh, push it off as, as pretentious, but I think there's, there's a little more to it than that. Um, and I think a lot of, um, a lot of those writers are pretentious, but I don't know. He's got a good heart and, and the stuff 
is is worth getting to i think so and hey a guy who's talking about how bad screens are we're here to talk about the video games uh, it's exactly. a medium that only can be played looking at a screen for a long time so well and you know he was very uh direct about his own addictions to television and how he yeah. loved watching tv and like that was something that he like when he was writing he had to throw tvs away out of his house because if he didn't then he would watch tv for eight hours a day instead of writing yeah. as much as he's supposed to and so the phones know, would be the same for us oh dude yeah 100 possible to get anything done with how many distractions there are available to us at our at our hand just just looking right at it like okay there it is it's, I can see whatever i want it's so true um so true. yeah but that's see that's why I like talking to you, Landry, because I think you and I we've we've mentioned this before in different ways. But yeah, sometimes you just get burnt out, and I think it's it, that's something that you can you can sort of see like in the games industry, or at least in the gaming space. There's a lot of people that struggle with depression and have like you know a lot of stuff they're going through, like everybody else. Um, and a lot of the times, the solution is not more screen time; it is like doing anything else but screens. And that's such a hard thing to like try and tell an audience that that's like their main thing. It's like, I know video, I, I am video games. And it's like, no, you're yeah. not. It's like, you're really <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah. That does not define you as a person. I was some, for some people it does sadly, but you got to yeah. take a step back and realize that, you know, there, if there isn't something more to life, then, then there probably should be, you know, <laughs> video <laughs> games should, should be, be your North, your North star. Yeah. And I will, I will, I can attest to that where video games become more enjoyable if they are not the main thing. Like if if they're just something you get to enjoy on the side, they're way more fun to play. So take that for what you will. Landry and I just gave you a little bit of a, a a, a mid, mid therapy session on video games and uh, differentiation and screen time. Well, if you are tuning in today, folks, we are not talking about as top topics that are as deep as that, but maybe we might, I don't know. Um, But we're talking about video games. So the month of July, what happened? We'll be going through all the games that came out for the month. We'll talk about next month, so August, what we can see on the horizon and games we might recommend to you. And then, of course, uh, Game of the Month Club, where Landry and I played Beyond Good and Evil, the HD collection that came out. And then last but not least, name that game music. So looking forward to our run of, run of the show here, Landry. Uh, let's jump on in over to this month in gaming news. So yeah, let's talk about July and gaming news. Landry, do you feel like we had a lot of big announcements or big things that happened? Not at all, man. <laughs> Until I looked at the list you put together, I was just like, what happened this month? Did anything happen this month at all? And I texted out, you and I was like, can you help me? Like, I was like, I think I'm missing something. And you're like, yeah, I'll look at it. And you added like a few things we could talk about. But it, like from news from a news standpoint, it's just like, yeah, this is this is a slow month. It's a slow month. When you're like scrambling and and just rifling through the internet looking for a single headline that may be interesting to have a little bit of a discussion on then you know it's pretty slow especially coming (laughs) it's kind of to be expected coming off of june we had so many video game announcements that was like you know the hammer dropped on that one so we're in the doldrums now until next month we're gonna have a lot of releases and then things are just gonna keep going from there so yeah it'll it'll pick up eventually so um things that did happen let's talk about this so uh xbox game pass price hike um basically what happens is uh, what happened is they came out basically and they're increasing the the bit like the price of every single tier of xbox game pass they're trying to phase out people from being on the lowest and essentially bump them up either to ultimate or stay at their stay at like the the base model which is now more expensive so um ultimate is twenty dollars and that um that is the one that actually will get you day one on game pass um i believe let me make sure i get this price hike or this pricing situation correct but a lot of people aren't happy including the ftc landry riff oh um, yeah dude <laughs> what are your thoughts i think that this was inevitable and expected but i also think that Game Pass, you just got to look at the reality now, man. It's what, $240 a year? That is a lot of money to be spending on video games, no matter how you slice it. Like, even for hardcore enthusiasts like me and you, like, how many new games are we buying a month? Like, 
twenty dollars a month is a big ask, especially in the day and age where a triple A game is vying for so much of your time. Um, like a seventy dollar game these days, if I'm going to drop seventy dollars on a new game, it's probably going to sustain me for a couple of months at least. A lot of these twenty dollar indie games uh, take up a lot of time too. I just I just wonder how much value there is in this now at twenty dollars mm-hmm. a month, and and you'll hear people talk about how it's still the greatest value in video games, but I really disagree. I think that PlayStation Plus is central, uh, not essential. Shoot, man. Uh, whatever the other one is, like extra, like that middle level is a hundred and it's like $130, $140 a year. Mm-hmm. I think they're pretty similar as far as content value and yep. quality games, indie games, AAA games, you name yep. it. Especially now that, you know, this tier right under Ultimate doesn't have day one Game Pass games. But, um, you know, I just. I'm I'm not surprised to see it. I kind of expected it. I think the FTC thing is really intriguing. Let's see where that goes. It's probably not going to go anywhere at all. It may tie Microsoft up in the courts a little bit, but they're going to win out in the end. Yeah, I, I'm curious. I, I need to read more into the initial ruling that um, happened back when the acquisition happened with Blizzard. But basically, this is like kind of what the F- FTC was trying to get them with, was you have this market share now of people that are on cloud gaming um, and you're locking people into a subscription essentially to have access to this kind of stuff. And then as soon as you take that away and you're degrading a product, um, people are left having to, you know, either decide if they want to spend more now. Like it's, it's, it's not uncommon, but I would say it is fairly, it's rare. I feel like for a service like this to actually have fe- more features taken away and put into a more expensive tier. It's like the newer tiers will get better things, um, but not take away from like what was initially uh, available at the base tier. So really quick reading and this the base off. tier still got a price hike. Did it not? Yeah. So they all, they all got, price so you're hikes. paying more now and you're getting less. Yeah. So this is from Forbes and this was written by, uh, Antonio Pequeño and the, this is the, the top part right here. So Xbox Game Pass, which allows users to play online, gives varying levels of deals, discounts, and video game downloads will have price increases from its most expensive ultimate tier, its cheapest core tier, and for its PC Game Pass starting Wednesday for new subscribers and in September for existing subscribers, according to the company blog post. Game Pass Ultimate's monthly price will jump from $16.99 a month to $19.99. PC Game Pass increases from $10 essentially to $12.00. And Xbox Game Pass Core will stay at ten dollars monthly, but rise from sixty dollars a year to seventy five a year for annual plans. Um, and yeah, you lose the uh, day one. So the middle tier Xbox Game Pass standard will be available to players in the near future for fifteen dollars per month, though it will not include access to day one titles. Hmm. I think I think what Microsoft so is doing is they're going to re- they're going to reach a ceiling, right? And maybe they're going to find it here where people are just going to bail or they're going to do what like smart consumers do, I imagine like you and me who you know what? This month I'm going to play something on Xbox. I'll I'll dive in for $20 a month. I'm going to cancel it immediately after, you know. Yeah. They're going to have a lot more of that rather than I mean, at some point it it's not sustainable to have a $20 a month subscription on top of all your other subscription services. You know, that's that's getting up there. Um, I just, to me, this is this is a wider issue of subscription models. This is not just specific to Xbox, though. Their their most recent. This is not a great look, but I think we're all headed this direction. In in all of our subscription models, you basically hit a point. Like we've all hit this point now, where it's not worth having subscriptions to everything. You know, like we we tried so hard to get away from cable TV. Right. And all of the packages that happened there where we didn't want to pay for all this stuff. And now we're right back to where we were. It's but worse just, now. Like, it's almost wanna, worse. Yeah. If you want to, <laughs> you know, keep up with the Joneses, you're looking at like $120 in subscriptions a year or, uh, I'm sorry, a month. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, Liz and I, 
are are not good at this right now. We've, we're subscribed to like way too many things at the moment, <laughs> but sometimes we're really good at it. When we've just had our budget meetings, we're really good at it. Yeah. We are uh, like a YouTube TV family, you know, and we do a lot of times we're just like, we'll cut off streaming services and just do that for a couple months. And it's, it's fine. You know, you're, it's going to be okay. YouTube you can catch TV. up with those shows and, and everything else later. YouTube TV, I really do feel like is the best best route for most people these days because it has such a wide variety of content that you would get in the other packages. And I don't know, there's just something about being able to watch like TV, standard yeah. TV, where you don't have as much choice and you're like, well, whatever's on is on. I'm just going to watch yeah. this, you know? But there's and so much stuff on the DVR. Yeah, you can watch too, so it's like, on demand things. Yeah, if you want to watch The Office, go for it. Seinfeld, go for it. You know, any of that, those old TV programs that are on TV, they're on the DVR, so. Programs? There's old TV programs. <laughs> that's no, a, yeah, dude, I'm we're showing our old. Person. No, wish. I mean, that's that's not, that's not excusable. That's not like a millennial <laughs> old. That's like a... <laughs> that's like a 60s. I was, I was born in 1937. The Johnny Carson and, program. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, oh, I don't know. Sorry. I'm tired of subscription models, um, and I'm. I, this is unfortunate. I hope that... I mean the, the whole the whole Xbox marketing game plan of day one on Game Pass like not anymore you can't say that anymore it's like day one on Game Pass if you are paying for Ultimate like it's like yeah oh, okay yeah their messaging is gonna have to change it's well like, I mean they got the messaging right on the last the last one but again and I was expressing this to you it's like I think Xbox you call it they won e not E three or whatever and I I agree mm -hmm. with that. They had some really cool trailers, but they still, in my opinion, have not come out with like just a game that hooks me and brings me into their ecosystem. There have been a couple here and there, like Sunset Overdrive or Rare Replay or Cuphead. Hi-Fi or Rush. Ori in the Blind Forest. Yeah, Hi-Fi Rush that I've been interested in, but they've either either ported those over to the systems I'm playing on or, yeah. um, you know, it's just like one of those things where it gets two, three, four years down the road, and you're like, I guess I can live without Rare Replay. I have most of that stuff on old consoles. But, yeah. you know. I have this content now in 70 different places, which we'll talk <laughs> about later, but apparently yeah, we, we have a lot of stuff just sitting around that we're not going to touch ever. Right. But we have it just in case you want to play it. So I don't know. We'll see. I uh, yeah, PlayStation, I'm sure, is headed in the same route with changes. I don't know what theirs is going to look like. I would hope that they would go down or at least just stay the same price, but... I'm interested in how this is going to go overall, though, with the streaming services, because like, I really genuinely believe they're going to all hit that ceiling where people are just going to bail, and I don't know if they're going to come back after they bail. You know, I and could are they... see, I could see PlayStation just being like, "We're not doing this anymore. We're just going to stop doing this subscription thing and just cut it off." And dude, what's honestly, so funny? The damage control wouldn't be that bad because they didn't own any of those games. You know, like yeah. no one owns games on there. They know that it's a streaming like service uh so or a subscription so it's and like, yeah. like if you nintendo caught so much heat earlier in their for their generation about how they did their online program and everyone's been out of shape because they're like they're not giving us enough classic content whatever you know it's only 20 dollars a year but like it sucks and now it's like you pay 50 dollars max a year for nintendo and you're that's that's incredible compared to $240 or $140 and you're still getting all of these classic games that even if you don't touch, you're getting your internet access. Mm -hmm. um, and the library of games is just, just by like by and far, I would say like much more impressive from, from a retro library. You're like, wow, these are like hundred percent from the retro games. library. I mean, obviously new you're titles, getting anything. Trash. New. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Nothing. F zero 99 Tetris 99. That's all you get. That's it. Pretty soon, we'll, pretty soon we'll get that Link or Zelda 99 and we'll play that. That would so, be fun. We'll see. I don't know. Moving on, um, really quick, just want to mention this. Echoes of Wisdom, the new Zelda game coming out in the uh, style of, um, gosh, Link's Awakening. No, what's, yeah, Link's Awakening? Yeah, Link's Awakening. That's Thank right. you. Sorry, I'm getting all mixed up. Uh, there was like some, some uh, files that came out that hinted at being able to actually still play as Link because like the whole thing was you can play as Zelda in this game like you are playing as Zelda but there is still an element where you're going to play as Link and I'm just wondering Landry like what do you envision do you envision being able to play the whole like there's like a whole half of the game where you're playing as Link or is it just like that opening scene that you're playing as Link yeah so 
this one didn't hit me as hard as like a news segment because we kind of saw it in the opening trailer, right? You see mm-hmm. Link walking up to Ganon and getting involved in that fight. And that, I mean, that literally may be it uh, yeah. for the ratings thing because they have to disclose everything to the ESRB um, for the ratings and stuff. So, you know, he's swinging a sword. That's going to have to be disclosed because that's violence, right? So he's probably going to uh... bump it out to that ESRB. 10 plus rating. You're so smart. Um, but yeah, you have to disclose that kind of stuff. Um, ever since what, like mortal Kombat, So, (laughs) um, and, and and reinforced by the hot coffee, Grand Theft Auto uh, (laughs) thing where they didn't disclose what was in the, that bug or, or cheat code. Yeah. So yeah, they're going to disclose that to protect themselves. But I genuinely think this is a Zelda game. (sighs) I'll be happy if it, if it's, Link and Zelda, I think that would be really cool. I'm gonna miss personally the sword, so the sword fighting and like the yeah. traditional Zelda game. Uh, but I'm also interested to see what kind of puzzles and solutions they've got cooked up for us with this new yeah. combat mechanic. Some people are mentioning like a new game plus situation where you finish the game and you you play as Link like the same way, oh, dude. using like the wand and stuff. Like you're not actually using. That it. That would like... be way too cool for Nintendo to put that in. Yeah. If they did that, that would be a DLC that they would charge you twenty dollars <laughs> for. That'd yeah. be so cool if they did that, but I seriously well, doubt it. Think about this though. This is Echoes of Wisdom, right? And historically, yeah. Zelda has gotten the Triforce of Wisdom, right? Right. So you need to. Echo of power and echo of courage, right? That'd Dude, be pretty sweet. If they, they if they release a game where you play as Ganondorf, that would be wild. <laughs> that would be wild. And they've done it well, not the Ganondorf thing before, but they've done the dual releases before. And technically they were they were shooting for the the Trinity there, right? Because they had a with Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, they had a canceled Oracle game that was just going to be a remake of The Legend of Zelda on NES, and it was gonna be that third pillar. But it got canceled. This right here, we're getting into the we're getting into the the deep deep web stuff here about Zelda. We'll see what happens. I but didn't know. I you know I hadn't I hadn't thought about that at all before. But that I just would be fun. Now. I, like, I cool. don't think that no that will happen, Jake. No, no way. Way. That could be awesome. Ain't gonna happen. No way. If it makes a lot of money, maybe, but I don't think it's gonna be a big big money maker for them. So, I mean, Link's Awakening remake. That I think that sold five million copies. I would imagine not bad. That this being a new game and not as much on the docket this year, I think it'll it could pull in. And plus, you know, you've got the hype from Tears of the Kingdom. This could pull in more switches know, in the wild than ever. Five million at least, I think, and that would be yeah. a success. I think for a two D, it's not two D, three D model like over the top uh, Zelda game. I think that would be a success. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, on to more things that are not successful. Segue. <laughs> Halo TV show canceled after two seasons. Just thought I'd put that on there because... Dude. Weren't, weren't. <laughs> this, I mean... I didn't obviously. even watch the first season. I didn't watch the second season. I, I saw all the yeah. reviews and people saying, like, this So the show kind of sucks. Like, it's just not yeah. that good. I, I really think. wonder... It, you know, I bet if I had watched the Halo season, then I would have known that theme song right off the start uh, <laughs> a couple episodes ago. But yeah, obviously... Don't let that haunt you anymore, Landry. Okay, we're, we're past I'm that not, now. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I didn't watch any of this. It, it looked cheesy from the first preview to me. And, and I he just took off that, his helmet and everyone was like, I don't want to see his face. I don't want to see Master yeah. Chief's face. Yeah, I don't know. That It would be... I guess it'd be cool. But I also... I don't know if you heard this, but I heard that... Uh, Chris Nolan, like Hollywood's darling, is very interested in making a TV show for HBO, and I think that they actually got the rights. Like they bought the rights from HBO or from Amazon, right? Mm-hmm. Who owns this? Peacock. I don't maybe know. Pe- I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's Peacock. I can't remember. Um, anyway, no they bought way. the rights from, uh, and I don't know if that was uh, real or not, but I saw that somewhere. I read that somewhere. <laughs> he's really interested in it, apparently. I'm trying to see who owns the rights. Yeah, Paramount Plus. Uh, Paramount Plus. That's so funny. I I watch Paramount Plus a lot because we have we watch Survivor like crazy people, and that's never once been like, oh man, hit me at all on the like feature yeah. shows. Here it is. Sony and talks to buy Paramount. That was a few months ago. I don't know. That'd be yeah. wild. I don't. I don't want that though. Don't do that. I don't either. He's he's too. Don't do that. No one. No one wouldn't. There's not there's not enough weird artistic stuff that he can do in there. 
It's just a yeah. space marine that shoots aliens. July that's, that's 27th, 2024. Is. Christopher Nolan reportedly interested in purchasing Halo TV series rights. Wow. He must After be a... Paramount Plus series was canceled. He must be a Halo guy. Holy smokes. He, yeah. He's a huge Halo fan, apparently. And so that's interesting. That's wild. If that happens, that, that'll be a, a wild bingo card to, to throw yeah. down. <laughs> Dude, well, I Chris mean, Nolan directing Halo. I would watch that, no question. Yeah, I would at least. Why would at least tune in to see what Chris Nolan's doing? Jeez, Louise. Um, okay, top five best-selling games of the month of May included. This is May. This report just came out from Pis- Piscatello, right? Matt Piscatello. Matt Piscatello, yes. So we had Ghost of Tsushima released on Steam. That's why it was the highest-selling game of that month. Uh, Paper Mario: Thousand Year Door, Call of Duty: Modern Warfare Three. Helldivers 2, and MLB The Show 24. Uh, notably, Hellblade, Hellblade 2 released May 24, and it ranked 37th. And you wrote, and you wrote, <laughs> you wrote, wah, wah. <laughs> Dude, that's so bad. And I get it that most people are playing that on Game Pass, so a lot of people aren't buying it. But at the same time, if there was any real interest in that title at all, you would see it higher than 37th. Um, yeah. But what this does show us is that Ghost of Tsushima, a Sony PlayStation exclusive from what, 2018? I can't remember, 2020, mm-hmm. 2019, who knows? It's been a few years, five years or so. Hitting number one in May, that, I mean, their PC publishing is really paying off for them. I remember The Last of Us 2 remastered when it came to PC was oh, geez, huge. Um, they're, ha- they're having a lot of concurrent players on Steam at the same time when these games are releasing. Um, it's awesome to see more people playing these games. They're incredible. Uh, so, this this is interesting. Um, looking at this this full list from um, Piscatella is uh, so Sea of Thieves is in the top ten. They're sixth on there, and that's because I think of the real double release on uh, PSN or PlayStation. Yeah, and then Hogwarts Legacy still coming in in the top ten at number nine. Wow, that's wild. Um, yeah. That- that game having that many that much legs is is crazy. I've been thinking about going back to that as well. I've been wanting to like finish that game. I just I never did. Dude, um, that's such a good game in my opinion. Yeah. As a fan of uh Harry Potter. If you're gonna play a Harry Potter game though, you gotta kinda play it in the fall or like the fall or the winter. Like that's the best time to play a Harry Potter game. Dude, you could just do like a seasonal playthrough of that game, and every time the the season changes, you just put I gotta it down stop playing. Months. Gotta stop. That's actually kind of a cool idea. Maybe my next playthrough when I'm I'm not cast as a Ravenclaw, I'll uh, I'll play again. I was a Hufflepuff oh, for the longest time, and then I I took the test again, and they gave me one. They gave me Ravenclaw, and two, they like my Patronus was a shrew, like just a, a rat. Just like <laughs> essentially sucks. a rat. I was like, this is the lamest. <laughs> Especially like knowing the series, that's not a, a good no. moment. Um, but not I was good. I was a Ravenclaw as well, Jake. So look at us. I I love Ravenclaw. That was always my favorite growing up. So it's not it's not the biggest loss because Hannah was a Ravenclaw, and so we when we were at Harry Potter World forever ago, we bought like scarves or something like that. So I can still use hers. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. I wear a scarf all the time. I have no idea where those scarves even are. <laughs> I used to think Hufflepuffs were so lame. <laughs> and, and I still still do think this is the lamest house. But the house, like if you go into the dorm rooms in that game, like the Hufflepuff houses are like the Shire. Like they're like little hobbit holes. Yeah, it's cozy, man. Cozy Freaking vibes. Awesome, dude. Ugh. All about that life. Yeah, you're making me want to get back into it. So anyways, that thought was kind of cool. Um, and Helldivers 2 also still remaining popular, which is pretty wild to me because Helldivers, I fell off hard. I was big into that, and I, you know, it was just, it was fun. And then I just got kind of done. I was like, yeah, this isn't really like the new content grind is just not an, an, an appeal to me. Yeah, uh, I'm. That's the way I am with all those types of games. If they hit for me, ever so rarely, I'm not going to be the person that's going to like make it my lifestyle. You know, so like I had a I had a big Rocket League phase like six years after it was launched. <laughs> and I got <laughs> I got really into it though. I Late played to the party. Like, so much of it. And by that time everybody had moved on. But um yeah, one day I just put it down and didn't pick it up for another, you know, I haven't picked it up since. It's been three years. I like the idea of I put it down and I never looked back. Yeah. Didn't I just I move, move on to something else. And it's the same way with like 
the sports games with me, you know, like I'll play a lot of like a Madden or 2k, but I'm not, that's not a lifestyle for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You'll play it. You'll enjoy it. And then you're done. I, I need variety sometimes. Yeah. I feel that. Yes. Um, all right. And then really quick, uh, interesting, funny bits, worst Twitter takes. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we'll, we'll, we'll do our big game releases for July 1st. My bad. So in the month of July, we also had uh, Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail come out, and that got an 81. That was a DLC for the MMO. Once Human got a 79. That came out on PC. Darkest Dungeon 2, July 15th on pretty much PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, and PC, 81. Uh, College Football 25 came out. People are loving that. Got an 82. That came out July 16th. Nintendo World Championships. July 18th came out on Nintendo Switch for, and it got a 72. Uh, Dungeons of Hinterburg, July 18th, PC and uh, Xbox, got an 80. And Kunitsugami, Path of the Goddess, July 19th, uh, PS, uh, pretty much came out on everything, uh, got an 81. So kind of a kind of a fun month, but again, a, a quieter month outside of, I guess, for you, maybe uh, Nintendo World Championships. What are your What are your thoughts on having played it now? for a little bit oh man i love that game it's so <laughs> much fun it's so cool um they do so much right with the presentation and i've been really surprised that sawyer my four-year-old who you know he's played some retro games but you know they're they're so hard he doesn't like them but this game's so forgiving he loves it and like he wants to play it he has to play it sometimes uh if we're playing video games instead of like he calls cat mario or mario 3d world cat mario we've been playing through some of that but he'll choose nes championships over that uh, a lot of times because every time you die or whatever you it just rewinds you back and then you're gonna finish the challenge no matter what and then it gives you a letter grade so it's kind of he doesn't know what that means he's like yeah i'm doing great yeah i mean he does he realizes if he gets a better score or not but you're still like, it still celebrates even if you get a C, which is the lowest score you can get, you know? So it's really fun. I think for kids to play weirdly, (laughs) it's obviously fun for people who have experience with those NES classic games, but I would honestly give this game a six out of 10. And I just sung a lot of its praises, Yeah, but it's so annoying how this could have been an incredible game. And the challenges just aren't that fun in in some ways. Like there's um I like a lot of the ice climbers and, and balloon fight challenges. So to be honest, those game that those games are not very fun, but the challenges are pretty cool. But like Mario Brothers three is just this incredible video game and they shop all the challenges out in like the first world basically. And then the boss like there's so there's probably, I didn't count them, there's probably 20 challenges for Mario Brothers 3. And eight of them are beat this boss in amount, mm. the amount of time. And then the rest of them are all in like the first world, including the last Legend Challenge, which is really cool, which is beat the first world in, in as fast as you can. Um, and then Super Mario Brothers, it's kind of the same thing. You get a lot of challenges in the first world of Mario Brothers. Uh, Legend of Zelda, a lot of the challenges are focused on the first dungeon and then like some of the bosses from some of the, so it's just like, dude, there's, they're just kind of scratching the surface and that's all well and good, but it just makes me think like there could have been so much more fun to be had if they had thought about these challenges a little more. This game seems like the development time was probably six months and uh, that's me speaking like a complete buffoon who has no idea how development <laughs> time goes, but it just seems like, like, and, and you'll start to see, like, it's like grab all the coins in this pipe world. And then the exact same, that's in super Mario brothers, the exact same challenges repeated in super Mario brothers three, and then repeated for that area and lost levels. So it's like, they're using the same templates of the challenges and just kind of in different levels, mm. you know, mm. and that would be fine if they moved it around a little bit, but in every game, it seems like you're scratching that first world or area and really playing those hard. And again, that's really fun. Like I really enjoy it, but it's just, you can't leave this game. I don't think if you're enjoying it and not feel like, man, what a missed opportunity. And it wouldn't be nearly as bad if I didn't know 
in my heart of hearts that Nintendo is never going to revisit this idea again. <laughs> it's like if this was like the first game this and they started shot. riffing on it, that would be really cool. Or if they were going to add DLC, I would, you know, this would go up hugely in my eyes. So the, the bones are great. I, I recommend it to anyone. So it's like the weirdest six I've ever given, given out, I think, to any game. Because like I think it's really fun. I think people should play it. I think even if you don't think you'd like it, you actually would. Um, and I do think it's actually a really good game for kids to play. Because, again, you've got your Mario. You've got your Zelda. You've got... And I think... Like Sawyer, experiences. Sawyer thinks it's cool to see these characters from Smash Brothers in their like first game, even as a four-year-old, you know. Um, secondly, there's no way, like Justin from Nintendo Watcher, there's no way for me to see his scores. And he's the only person I know who's playing this game right now. But like, I'll get an S rank on something. I can't see what anybody on my friends list has done. So I'm playing against myself only. Mm. And like, there's no online leaderboard for anybody like you don't get to see anybody's online scores period there's no i thought real, there was i thought there the was only one way, way to show the only way to do it is they have a weekly championship and you can compete in the four challenges they pre-pick for you and they're out of the challenges that are already in the base game speedrun game and you put you post your best times for that week and then you can see how you place against everybody else but there's no like even so in the championships, like I'll get S rank on everything. And then I'm like, okay, cool. That's what I'm going to send in. And then it comes to come to find out I'm like 7,000 in my age bracket, you know? But if I mm-hmm. could see actively as I'm doing those championships, like, oh, I'm 7,000. Like I'm going to keep working on my score, you know, and keep getting faster. So there's just some frustrating things that are That's weird. Too bad. Um, but again, I love it. I'm playing it every night since I got it, uh, just chipping away at it a couple challenges. And to be honest, it's one of the highlights of my year. But at the same time, I feel a little uh, just it's hard not to think about it out. with some no, not more. with some uh, negativity as well. You know? Yeah, I just looked it up. Giant Bombs, Reddit. Um, they were also quoting um, Andy Robinson from VGC. And this this is this criticism applies to the entire Nintendo World Championship NES edition package. Baffingly, none of the individual speedrun challenges in the game display any kind of high score or, or leaderboard from online players. Not even the players on your friends list are listed, which feels like a huge omission from this kind of game. <laughs> Dude, I'm seriously that type of like weirdo. I remember my buddy Jeff, he got Super Mario Odyssey the same day I did. And we're like 2017 new switches. We went back and forth on those speed run challenges. Jeff Allen or who? Jeff Allen. Yeah. 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 Uh, probably like I spent probably 10 hours on those speed run challenges and Mario just trying to like one up him and then he'd one up me and then I'd one up him. You know, yeah. I had so much fun with that. And I was really looking forward to doing that with, you know, anybody who would be on my friends list, but nope, not, not an option. So dang, 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 dang. Come on, Nintendo. You're better than this. All right. Well, I don't really have anything to say on most of these releases. Like the Kanutsugami I, uh, looks really cool. Um, that's like the tower building one slash like s- town management game um, people are really into. And then yeah. Dungeons of Hinterberg, one of our good friends also um, from our fantasy critic text group uh, is playing this. And he said it's very chill vibes adventure game. Combat's not as tight as you might want it to be, but it's still a very competent and like beautiful and just good game. Um, so I think I might check that out. I might pick that up on steam deck. Yeah, that one looks cool. I very much like the vibe of that game for me. The one that stands out to me that I probably will play at some point, whether it's at a friend's house or, or actually buy a copy is college football 25. I'm stoked for all my buddies who have People been waiting on it. this for, you know, 11, 12 years, however long it's been. Um, it's it's different. I mean, from what I remember, the college football games always played different than Madden, which is what I've played my whole life, basically. So in the past, I feel like college football was always more fun to actually play in like an arcade sense because you could just kind of run through people. The run plays seemed to work a lot better. The defenses, <laughs> The defensive AI didn't seem to be as good. 
that may be completely different in college it football. It looks a 25. lot like Madden. I played. I watched some buddies play last night, and um, it seems like it's a lot like Madden. Um, yes, yeah. they were saying they were saying like the defense is still pretty hard uh, to play. So maybe you're right. Maybe like being on offense is really just a lot of a lot more fun because you can just get away with a lot of crap. Uh, yeah. But, who knows? But it makes sense, I guess, because the players are less skilled. But they threw a lot um, of interceptions, though. So. Oh, really? Interesting. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> who knows? Errant passes left and right. I, I, I think it'll be fun to play that. I, to be honest, I watch a lot of NFL. I do not watch a lot of college football. So this one does not appeal to me as much personally. Yeah. However, I live in the Southeast, and it is part of the culture here. So at some point, I will probably play this game, and I'll be happy to do it. I saw where someone put the mocks in uh, oh, in the nice. Chattanooga Reddit. Someone put the the fit like they like built Finley Stadium and put the mocks in there. I was like, nice. Oh my gosh, they're nice. not in the actual game. I guess they're not. Yeah, they're not in football. So yeah, but he made his own team, and you can download his player like his like build or whatever. Essentially, that's so. pretty cool. Anybody that's can play cool. as a mock. All right, and then last little interesting funny bit. Uh, we mentioned this sort of briefly, but Steam users have spent $19 billion, dude. capital B, on games they've never played. This <laughs> came from uh, Steven Totillo's game file and a, a report from somewhere else. But uh, if that's if that doesn't speak to the, the, the I guess the, uh, what's the word? Not plight. Maybe it is plight. The plight of man or, or of, of gamers <laughs> everywhere where you just, you think you have time to play these games, so you'll buy them when they're on sale and then you just never touch them. Yeah. Dude, Especially I mean, I fall victim to that. I fall victim to that on Switch, on the eShop. You know, almost every week I check and see, like, hey, what's, is there an indie game that I've been wanting to play? Like, most recently, Untitled Goose Game was like nine ninety nine, And I was like, I haven't played that yet. I didn't wind up picking it up, but I was literally like, I was hovering over that button. I was thinking about it just last <laughs> night. But uh, I feel like, I feel like finding and buying discounted games is a game in itself on like pl- on platforms there's something fun about like just sourcing through and trying to find deals Dude, like, hit up hit up uh deku deals yeah deku are, deals is amazing or is that only for switch i don't know it's for any console um but if you oh. want pc there's a ton of other sites there's one that's called is there any deal that just catalogs every discount that's happening right now on steam oh, um, that's cool. and you can sort by all kinds of stuff like by user rating metacritic rating open critic rating trending you know whatever you can do you can do all kinds of stuff largest discount price um yeah it's it's pretty amazing so 19 billion dollars what that tells me is i need to stop buying games on steam i have a small library right now of like 13 games and i've already like i've been clearing out the ones i'm beating so i just need to kind of move through them slowly and just take it easy Chew on it, Jake. Take yeah, it savor easy. it, man. Dude, Take play that easy. freaking pizza game I've wanted to play for forever. Please let me know how it is. And I then played the a one, little bit of it. And then the, the one like taxi game that looks That's like pretty it's like fun. crazy taxi slash Super Mario 64. Just play those and uh, I'll be very jealous of you. All right, and then I'll, I'll, do I'll, it. I'll never want a Steam Deck again. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. You're going to get a Steam Deck. Uh, mark my words. You'll have a Steam Deck by next year. Dude, I gonna... guarantee you, and I, I I would just bet a whole lot of money that I will not. I, <laughs> I have almost zero interest in a Steam Deck. Currently. That's what you think. That's what you think. <laughs> I'll keep I'll keep talking to you about it every single time we podcast. I it's... have a very strong suspicion, and maybe this is wrong, and maybe at some point I will get one, but that won't be in the next year. That everything that I want to play that's available on Steam Deck will come to console at some point. At some point, whether it it's will. ten years from now, or five years from now, or but twenty it'll cost years from now, twice as much. Dude, it's still not going to be five hundred dollars because if I'm going to get a Steam Deck, I want the OLED. So I'm good, dude. <laughs> All right, we'll see. We'll see about that. All right, let's jump over to Game and Watch for August. Yeah, uh, Landry, how about you run this list for us? All right, let's take a look at next month's game releases that we think will be worth checking out. First up, we have Helldivers 2, Escalation of Freedom. It's coming Escalation out August. Of freedom. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> so that title is on brand. Um, it's coming out August 6th. It's the biggest update since launch, and it includes new enemies, bigger bosses, new content, and a higher difficulty level. Uh, I'm not a Helldivers 
guy personally, but Jake, you got into that for a minute. Yeah. I'm excited about this. Uh, cool. Maybe it'll be enough to get me to go back in. Um, but again, I fell off hard and like half of the fun is playing with your friends. So you have to now convince your friends to get back in <laughs> who have also fallen off hard. So it's like, well, maybe the update will bring some people back in for, yeah. Hey, even if it's a couple hours, revisit the content, bounce off. That's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next, next up we got cat quest three on August 8th. And one that I'm looking forward to see, seeing is steam world heist two that comes out on August 8th as well. Oh, then we got Madden 25, August 16th. Another one I'm really interested in is Black Myth Wukong in August 20th. Based on like Chinese mythology, it looks like an action yeah, that game, game that kind of like, uh, people keep calling it like a Souls-like, but I think that's a little overused in the market. I, like When I saw it, it reminded me more of like God of War, like that fast-paced, really mm-hmm. fluid combat as opposed to like kind of like slow, methodical mechanical combat of a souls game where you're kind of like trying to figure out patterns. You do yep. a little bit of that in God of War, but with God of War, I'm more just kind of like Hulk smashed my way through the game. Uh, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how Black Myth Wukong's combat works out, but the game looks incredible. Uh, as far as like graphics, like it really mm-hmm. looks like it's running on like Unreal Engine 5. I don't know what engine it's on, but it, it looks next gen. It looks gen. that good, yeah. Then we got Dustborn, August 20th. Concord on August 23rd. Jake, you said you were interested in this one. This is a PS, this is a PlayStation exclusive, right? Yeah. So I missed the beta and they, they had like free times to jump in, which I'm, I'm sure PlayStation is going to do that probably around launch as well. Like let people play on the weekend for free or something like that. Um, but I definitely want to check it out. Like I'm always down to check out a hero shooter. And from what I was just kind of seeing people say is like the game feels really good. Um, yeah, I heard some good th- good feedback on it. It is fun to play, um, but again, I don't know how much. I don't know like that doesn't equate to it being a, a huge success. Like I don't know how I don't know the yeah. legs on this game, and I feel like it's going to be another one like X Defiant, where really fun came out, people were interested in it, they played it for a few months, and they've kind of all died off. Yeah, um, so. you can never tell with those games, man. They're just it's a really competitive space, and I think unfortunately like their games that have cemented themselves have they're just kind of there now so it's like csgo valorant and like overwatch maybe but like people have kind of died on overwatch too um so it's like even less so now we'll see yeah it's wild dude yeah <laughs> world of warcraft the war within it's coming mm-hmm. out august 26 dude when i was in eighth grade <laughs> i went to a LAN party Oh. Uh, with like eight different computers in my buddy's basement. We were all playing World of Warcraft. That was, I'm 36 years old. That had to have been 22 years ago. Yeah. Maybe more. It's crazy, dude, that this game is still existing. Still going, man. People in love some it. capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, MEO The Smiling Man is coming out August 29th. This is from Nintendo. It's the next installment in the Famicom Detective Club series and famicom is the family computer that's the the (laughs) nes japanese nes so this is a game series that went extinct back then to my knowledge i'm not uh japanese obviously um so this was a japanese exclusive series on the nes but i was looking up some sales data for the famicom detective club and it was very very popular on the Mm. nes back in Japan. I'm pretty sure it was like in that same tier of like Super Mario Brothers 3 Dragon Quest for them. Uh it was up there. So this okay. is probably a much bigger announcement I think for people on that side of the world than it is for us. However, yeah. Nintendo put a really cool marketing stunt with this and it was about 2 weeks ago. They just dropped about the creepiest <laughs> A video you yeah. could ever imagine Nintendo dropping of this man standing in a suit on like a, it basically looked like a wall from Saw, like a Saw movie with like that kind of like yep. gray filter and like there's static on the wall and stuff. And he had a paper bag over his head with just a kind of like a Sharpie drawn smile on it. And the question, the tagline was like, who is the smiling man? And then about a week later, they dropped this trailer with the creator of the Famicom Detective Club series coming back saying, hey, we're bringing this back. We're creating this kind of new urban legend about Emio, the smiling man. If you see him, you're going to die soon. So like pretty cool vibes. Pretty spooky for Nintendo. Very spooky for Nintendo. 
Uh, the last time I can remember Nintendo doing a horror game was Eternal Darkness. There may have been something in between yeah. that. I mean, I know they publish uh, that camera game. What's it called? Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yes. Where you um, photograph um, ghosts and stuff. Black, yeah, it's on the tip of my tongue. Fa- uh, Phantom. <sighs> now it's, okay. it's, it's going to bother me. Yeah, I know. Same. I, we'll like think about it in 10 minutes and shout it out. Uh, up next, Visions of Mana. This is in the Secret of Mana, like uh, Trials of Mana series. New First new game to come out in that series in a long time, August 29th. Dude, Secret of Mana is like a top 25 Super Nintendo game. That game is mm-hmm. well-renowned, very great. Uh, so I'm interested to see if Visions of Mana can come out and make some waves. I, I really so, like that action RPG style. It's not super hardcore JRPG. Um, I like the art style too. So the art style looks good. It like what I loved about Secret of Mana, um, which I've never actually beat, but I've played quite a bit of, is it just like takes place in like this wooded area almost constantly. It seems like the yeah. game is uh giant in forest. that in that giant forest area. There's some really awesome vibes and incredible pixel art. So yep. Visions of Mana doesn't have pixel art, it's three D graphics, but it looks great. And then finally we have Star Wars Outlaws coming out August thirtieth. I've been very impressed with this game every time they show it, and I am not a Star Wars guy. So Yeah, it looks really interesting. It looks visually uh, impressive, and I think from a gameplay and sort of mechanic standpoint, I think they've hit the nail here with just being a little bit removed from the Disneyification of like what's been going on for a while and trying to just tell this siloed story maybe that is a bit more grounded and less less ridiculous. It's more just like about a smuggler's life and trying to figure out how to make it in in this galaxy. And uh, yeah, it seems cool. Yeah, and and the EAification, right? This is the first. Is this one of the first games that's not EA that's coming out? Oh well, yeah, so. is this Ubisoft doing this? Yeah. So wow, it, it'll be cool to see Star Wars in some new hands. Um. Massive Entertainment is uh, doing this. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm excited about that. Also, the game, was it Fatal Frame? Is that what it was? Yeah, that's it. There you go. And it was like a sound. But I was like, what is it? <laughs> um, I, was, I couldn't even get there. Yeah, I'm looking forward to a few games next month. I think for like you, I'm looking forward to Visions. I'm looking to uh, looking forward to Star Wars Outlaws and Concord. Those would be my three that I'm kind of like going to keep my eyes on. Same. I'm going to definitely watch the hype cycles for all these. I don't know if I'll pick any of them up next month, but I will definitely be watching. I'm excited. Same. Speaking of watching, huh, let's jump on over <laughs> to our Game of the Month Club. Dude. That was a horrible segue. <laughs> One of the worst segues. <laughs> yeah, Speaking you've of had watching. some really great ones. Oh, man, I'm getting tired. All right. So, yeah, uh, each month, if you are tuning in for the first time and you're not familiar how this works, uh, Landry and I will try to pick a game that we want to play, and we will hopefully uh, pick a game that is also widely available for the audience if you want to join along with us, and we'll just come together next month to talk about it. So we chose Beyond Good and Evil, the specific anniversary collection that released last month or like right before the start of the last month. It just made sense, and we both had wanted to check it out. And Landry, had you played this game before? I had played it before, but it had okay. been so long uh, that it it had like almost completely fallen out of memory for me. Okay, and yeah, so I'd never I'm, played it. Yeah, and this was this was all new. I'm for excited me. to see what you think. Yeah, and um, I had heard I'd only ever heard great things about it, and so um, was this was this originally just a GameCube title, or was it on other platforms? It was on PS2, Xbox, and GameCube, okay. I believe. Okay. Like a full, yeah, multi plat. That's great. That's great. I remember just the box art for the GameCube specifically, um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I, like, how would you describe this game? Like, to, to me, this felt like Jack and Daxter, a little bit of like platforming, but then they like they do it like I don't know. I guess like top level. First thing I want to say about this game is I was really impressed. Like, I think I remember. Yeah. T- I think I remember texting you almost uh, like a a day after we had started playing it. And I was like, this is actually really 
like solid. Like I'm, I'm impressed with the production value. I'm impressed. I'm, I'm impressed with like the music and really like the voice acting is pretty good. Yeah, voice acting is pretty good. I don't know if that's been redone since this. And I don't think it has collection I'm came sure out. It did not. Um, I just think this, the, the, like the, the biggest element of this game that like immediately was so strong to me was the art direction or at least the setting and the, um, I guess the environments that they chose to place you in. You're just in this city called Hillis and there's these things that come down and attack and your generator doesn't work. And like, they kind of just throw you into the story. They're just like, Hey, go, go do this, go turn the generator back on, you know, the alpha section, we got to make sure we pay them. And you're like, Oh, okay, whatever. Um, and you know, very basic, you know, combat, is pretty simple but you move out and the game starts right there off the bat and i was like oh this is like i appreciate this like it they're not giving me this whole like tutorial lead up situation where they're trying to explain everything that's happening they're like i am jade i live in this world at like a weird lighthouse orphanage place and yeah yeah (laughs) yeah there's a lot that's not really explained i love that but you can put it all together you can put the pieces together they have a lot of confidence i think in their storytelling to just kind of put you in a place and then let, you know, they don't need exposition to tell the story. They kind of let, they tell it through whether it's a TV monitor you see as you're walking past it or Mm -hmm. one of the characters you're talking to, you kind of put all the pieces together. So yeah, some really confident storytelling for, especially for back in the day. Yeah. I just, I mean, to your point about environmental storytelling too, like when you do venture the first time into the city, people know you people know jade and you know like you have already you already have a lot of connections there apparently and so you start talking to people and they're like jade good to see you again you know oh how's how's it going over there you know and they'll like offer you d- discounts on something or like you obviously have established yourself here and you're like right. oh this is interesting like yeah like the you were learning about jade's story as you actually interacted with people and you're kind of forced to in this game and it didn't feel overwhelming either because it's not that big of a game you know it's limited by the time that it was built so you know most modern games can do this but they have so much more technology at their hands and they can they can expand as much as they want so when i go to a new city in a modern open world game i'm like almost overwhelmed because i'm like dude there's just so many things that i can do and i don't even know what to do right now and right like what like what like what's happening here and this one's just like, no, yeah, this is Jade. You, you can talk to these like four people. You can go to this bar if you want to. You can uh, talk to these Jamaican rhinos that are like really sweet <laughs> and they help you out with fixing your stuff up. And they work in the black market. Everyone knows that. But apparently, yeah, <laughs> the office like section doesn't care. <laughs> they only accept a completely different type of currency than everybody else is taking. So, yeah. Um, sorry, kind of got off track there. But yeah, I mean, that those, those, those were all highs for me. I was just really impressed i don't know what you kind of dude i mean about i second every single thing you said um one of the things that really stuck out to me is in one of our previous conversations you had mentioned your fatigue of like realism in video games and how it's just kind of getting boring and this the art direction in this game is just such a breath of fresh air it's kind of like a sci-fi cyberpunk aesthetic i guess but um yeah, they do such a good job of doing the world building through the backgrounds. The animation is really cool. It's held up very well. I know that, you know, a lot of this, this game looks much better than the original version, but I don't know how much they cleaned up a lot of the original like polygons or anything. I think they just kind of put like some HD filters on it. Um, Mm -hmm. New textures maybe or something like that. Possibly. It looks pretty, it looks pretty dang good to be honest. Um, But I really liked also, there's some mechanics in this game that are not that great. I'll just be straight up. I don't think mechanically this is where this game, like the game doesn't shine as any one like single part of the mechanics. They all come together, you know, to form something. I think that's pretty special, but the photography element, you're Jade, Mm. you're not really, you can tell that combat wasn't the focus of this story. Right. And in the developer notes, you get like this really cool photo gallery along with this thing. That's not really a photo gallery. There's uh, movies, there's uh, like flip book sketches, there's Mm -hmm. audio logs. And they talk about how they initially wanted to make a game that had, did not have a a combat focus. Like 
combat might be in the story, but that wasn't going to be the thing. So they came up with this like photography idea and you're basically working as like a special agent journalist and yeah, taking reporter. photos of all these yeah. different species and all these, you know, terrible things that are going on in this, in this world and what's really going on with the Alpha section, which is kind of like this corporate, uh, corporatized military, agency. military yeah, government yeah. agency that's, uh, you know, controlling this area. But yeah, you kind of sneak in and take pictures of all this stuff. Like that's just really cool. It felt cool. It was interesting. Um, the hovercraft, which is a big part of like how you get around in this game controls really well. And yeah. that was fun to upgrade. And there's even some like kind of shooting sections with that, that are better than because there's so few of them. I feel like they're way better than they have any right to be. I was going to uh, say the same thing. The The races that you have to compete in had no no right being actually as competent as they were. I was like, this yeah. is actually like a totally solid racing like game. Like the the few, uh, there's four races you can play and one of them ties into the story where, I mean, spoilers at this point, but yeah, you you basically have to jump a fence to get into these the slaughterhouse, uh, this, <laughs> like, this next area where the alpha section might be doing some shady stuff. And, um, it's just like, again, it all just ties into this whole element of this world where there's a underground racing scene where people are racing their hover boats and you win pearls for, for winning the race and you use those That's pearls true. to buy things on the black market again. And it's just like, this is <laughs> and the idea of like taking that shortcut in the race racetrack or basically like jumping that fence to get to like the next, essentially there's four, like what would be like a dungeon in a Zelda game. There's four mm -hmm. kind of like levels where you have to get something at the end, whether it's a photograph or something like that. Um, but yeah, to get to the next dungeon is, is super cool. Um, man, there's yeah, so just, many great ideas and you can just, tell that they poured a lot into this game. Yes. Um, and like one, like one more thing that you kind of mentioned is just like, uh, the, the, the story beats all, move along in a way that doesn't overstay its welcome and they all tie into each other. So like you're never left like totally aimless or wandering, like, which I kind of appreciate. You're just like, okay, I've, I got, uh, this piece that now like of my space, my hovercraft that lets me do this next part that I very clearly need to go do. And like, it's marked on my map for me. If I don't, if I don't know where to go, like it just shows like the two objectives that I have. And it's like infiltrate the alpha section here or, you know, go do this. And you're like, okay, cool. Um, like, yeah, I, I, I never felt overwhelmed and collecting all the orbs also was easier than I thought. When I saw that there was like 80 or maybe even 90 of them, I was like, Ooh, that's a lot of orbs, but you, you kind of like just a couple orb dumps. <laughs> like yeah. after yeah. you get like one dungeon, I was like, wow, they just gave me 15 for that. That's that made me feel good. <laughs> I was like, Oh, thank goodness. I don't have to do all that. And then, yeah, there's like one, the volcano there's a there's a layer of these like dragonfly things that just have orbs in them and i think i got like 15 to 20 orbs just from that place too so i was like okay i was like this is not as bad as i thought it was going to be collecting these is not hard um and I, i'm missing one i need to go back and find one but um i guess moving on to like lows a little bit unless there's more highs anything else you wanted to say no i think that covers most of the highs that i have i think we did beat it pretty good there um, you mentioned this, but I, I, I don't have any more lows to mention than the ones that you did. So I'll, I'll mention one, but yeah, the fighting <laughs> is not great in this game. Um, like it's... you, as you said, it was not really, I didn't know that they actually tried to design first a photography game. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but the fighting is not great. I mean, it really is just button mashing it. You kind of snap to a character awkwardly and then you just start hitting them and you just push X and she flips around and just kind of like hits things. And then you. You, you almost will never take damage in this game. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then there's I, there's two two spots in the game out of nowhere where I feel like you take an absurd amount of damage from enemies. One of them, there's just like these weird like stingray enemies that were really hard to hit, and they, they came in at you from like every angle. Mm -hmm. And I died probably like six times on this one spot. <laughs> and then I finally realized I could just hide in the corner on the wall and just... No one could get, they just came at me one at a time and I kind of knocked them out. But that was weird mm -hmm. because there are so few parts where combat's the focus. And then 
you know, the last boss of the game I really struggled with because I got into a situation where I had no health packs and I was trying to basically I had to beat it with four hearts and, you know, which required like rote memorization, which is, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a part of games. It's fine. It's just not, that's not how the game had acted previous to that moment. So I find that a little frustrating. It's a very minor complaint, but yeah, fortunately, even though the fighting sucks, you don't use it very much. Um, but one of the main mechanics of the game, I would say, is that you do have to do a lot of stealth in this game. Mm. And it's... Stealth is not good. It's rudimentary. I, I'm i not a stealth... I, I think stealth in almost all games is boring to me because it's a lot of waiting out guards to walk their routes and then, you know move forward and then slowly wait as they walk their path again and then mm-hmm. move forward. And that's definitely what this is. Is it horrible? No, for me, it wasn't horrible, but it is tedious and slow. And, you know, there's only one way clunky. to kill a lot of the guards. That's true. Yeah. There's a couple of times where I was just like, dude, he didn't see me, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but there's only one way to kill a lot of these guards and you have to wait till they turn their backs. And then, you know, from a distance, snipe them with your your long range weapon and that can be annoying too because you're still waiting on them to complete their route turn around their backs or whatever so mm. again just kind of slow but i will say all those slow moments gave them a lot of times to take some great screenshots for their pressers because jade like does this really cool thing whenever she's like behind a wall or behind like uh, a bench or something and she kind of snaps to that wall and i remember feeling like that was the first time i'd seen that when it happened back then she like snaps to the wall and like leans her head over like she's looking and just it looks really cool Mm -hmm. um but that's a you know that can only (laughs) that can only sustain your boredom for so so long long. yeah Yeah, and like yeah the, the you can also like i don't know if you tried this but you can just run up to them and if you hit them in the back with like your staff, they'll just go, oh, and yeah, like they'll start yeah, that's, running around. More, that's a risk reward thing. And right? then you just like, kick them. A... I, I ended up doing that more often than just trying to stealth around places because it was taking too long. I was like, all right, I'm just going to run up to them and kick them in the back and hope for the best. And yeah, it, it worked more like nine times out of ten. Well, that's good. And so yeah, you found I... those ones that were like instant kill. If you were spotted at all, the laser would just murder you. And you're like, yeah, in okay. the later levels, that happens a lot. And then there's some guys that don't have the tanks at all. Yeah. Um, one thing I did remember, um, I did appreciate them implementing the codes that they would attach to actual in-game items that you receive from people. So you have to actually yeah. look at them in your pack and like rotate them to see the code on the back. And you're like, oh, okay, there's like the one I need to input here. And that was ha- pretty sweet. It has like, you know, I got a hint that it's going to be in this area or there literally is like a map sort of of a place that you have to go to and find it. Um, or did you? Yeah, I guess you said you found most of the pearls, but like room number two and that one in you go to all the time Mm -hmm. you go downstairs and that guy's like covering something but you stand far back and you can zoom in your camera and see the code that he keeps covering and that's his room code it's pretty cool oh there's some just really cool stuff i think there's two like that are you talking about the 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 two guys in the corner like at the booth that are like kind of being shady and he like yeah he covers covers with his hand yeah that was so great and then there's the other guy that's like passed out face down on the desk and if you look closely at his papers there's also something on the desk there yeah, the one um, that like lost his family to the alpha section or whatever. Yeah, really yeah. dark actually. <laughs> yeah, like, there's damn, a lot of there's damn. a lot of you know heavy themes, but you know one of the things I also appreciated about the storytelling in this game is that even though it's dealing with heavy stuff, it's lighthearted. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It's very of its time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but that was refreshing. Like to me, it was refreshing. I thought it was it was fun. Yeah, and I, I I think, you know, I don't know if you caught the uh, warning at the beginning where, like, there was, like, hey, there's some portrayals here that could, you know, are a little bit dated and, like, maybe offensive. And I don't, maybe there's more to that that I don't know, but I was, like, I don't, I didn't catch anything that was, like, super off, off Dude, base. I, I missed that one, but, yeah, now no, you said um, I don't even know what they could be, I guess. I did you make it rhinoceroses? It. But... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's a little cliched. But there were. But it I was mean, awesome. Like I, yeah, I, there was. I, I loved going there. Like the music was so dude, good. That music was incredible. Just vibing the there, trying to buy incredible. stuff. Yeah, that song comes up a lot. It's like the race song too. Um, oh no, no, the the race one's a little bit different. Um, 
I forget, but I love when you go to the Akuda bar and it's like propaganda. Like, yeah, that's, that's that's the one I'm thinking. That's I thought that was in the the right. <laughs> yeah, there's there is some oh, man, what a yeah, song. <laughs> just such a techy like late, I guess like early two thousands song propaganda. Yeah, it's very yeah. like house vibes, and you know it's made by a European team in the two thousands. So yeah, contracts. it feels right. It feels it feels right. <laughs> I'm glad you you brought that up. Yeah, the music oh, honestly was it caught me off guard. Like it was sparse when it would play, but like when when you would come across a song, you're like oh, this is actually like it's a good song. Like this is yeah, this is nice. And I do want to. I know I touched on it, but that photo gallery, dude, it was so cool. Sick. I was like, I popped into it, and I was like, I just want to see what this is before I shut this game off forever. And I was like, I was in it for two hours. It's incredible. It's Dang. like so the first six photos you're like okay it's a normal you know sketches of like different things but what they do is really cool like in the ui there's actually like script telling you about each one so a lot of times in these photo galleries you're like okay what am i looking at here it looks like you know donkey kong country world one but like in pencil um cool (laughs) and that makes sense (laughs) But, but like this game started off like as a completely different concept and it gives you like the background of the whole development team they're like so it starts in 1997 when they're working on Rayman 2 for the N64. And the yeah, teams, Michelle Ancel, I saw you text about that. Yeah. I, I looked him up also before you'd sent all that stuff, and I was like, oh, yeah. Michelle Ancel's Ray- team wanted to split and do something, and then Ubisoft Montreal was the other team, and they're like, we'll work on Rayman 3. You guys, Ubisoft Paris or whatever, uh, work on this next project they wanted to get started. And that's when they started beyond good and evil. And so and then, but like you get to a part where they show you the first vertical slice they showed in house to Ubisoft, uh, like investors to like green light the mm-hmm. game. And then you get to see the E3 lead up of like the demo they put together for, uh, the team just to get hyped. Wow. Like, Hey, we've got, this was internal only, but it's like, guys, we've got a good product here. Like, they show you like some of the staff meeting notes before E3 and like, it's just so cool. And then they, you see the trailers and some of the E3 pressing stuff, like actual video footage from that time as well. It's just really cool what they did with that. And I'm a nerd who watches like old, you know, E3 footage from like 1997 just for fun sometimes. So it's cool to see that 2003 era of golden age. Yeah. Of, e3 booths and everything so dang neat i recommend checking it out i actually haven't finished the whole gallery yet um i got to like that e3 video and i didn't even get to press play on it because i had to go pick up the kids from school but i'm gonna finish that before i I put that one away i watched some of the e3 stuff just a little bit of it just to kind of see what was in that folder because it interested me and uh, yeah it's cool it's like pretty grainy like it doesn't look that good but it's it's fun to watch um and uh i'll have to go back and check the other stuff out because I, you 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 sort of hit on this a little bit, but because it is also a tie-in, and it's a it's a 20th anniversary, they added some new stuff to this game that is also pointing people towards Beyond Good and Evil Two, whenever that's going to release. Um, and Dude. it kind of it makes me excited because like I am interested in these characters. Uh, I I'm love. Glad you brought that up. I love that they're all this weird. Mix, mix max of what's what's the term for like uh human like animals Anthrop- anthropomorphic thank you uh anthropomorphic characters i think that's a great just that's that's just a great idea and it's been, been done so many places and it works every time and i'm excited for it again i want to see what's going on with this uh in a new system that has a lot more freedom and flexibility but hopefully not so much that it's overwhelming um, yeah I'm worried about that game, right? Because Michelle and Sal quit Ubisoft during the development. I don't know that I think it's ever he's just kind of done with games in general, though. Yeah, like, he's got to be just old kinda burnt out. I looked him up, point. and he just yeah, I I forget what his project is right now. I think it's like conservation. I think he's like really in, in, invested and involved in like um, environmental stuff. Cool. So good cool. for him. That is cool. Um, I was kind of surprised that he did Beyond Good and Evil. Like, I didn't realize that. I I like Rayman a lot, so yeah been on those games but all right it makes well, sense you had to score one. this though what would you actually you know what are we, are, we, are we doing scores or are we, are we doing with scores i don't know if i had to score it it's hard it's hard to be uh like i would give this a five personally 
I don't know if that's the right score for it. Like I know it has its flaws. I just mm-hmm. think it comes together better than a lot of games, especially from that era. And also it, for me personally playing through it now, it had so much about video games that I think video games are missing right now. Mm-hmm. I think at the very least, it should be an important game for people to go back and look at and see how we haven't lost our way. I don't think in video games, that's way too dramatic of a statement, but it we, has heart. It just, it, it, it has, it has heart. heart. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you, putting a numerical value on heart when some of the other mechanical stuff is maybe by the wayside or not quite up to par. Yep. is difficult. Like, but I'm so tired of people glossing over that, I think, in some reviews I see, you know? But, like, Mm -hmm. you look at Metacritic, and every game has, like, a 78 to an 84. And it's like, there's just, we're not paying attention to some of the things that matter a lot more, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And this game, even though the sum of its parts probably equals a 4, to me, it's a 5. Yeah. Or out of 10, where would you stand? 8? 9? nine probably yeah i think i'm right there with you i'm probably like an eight eight and a half to a nine um yeah i think it's great and the best part about it is i think just the heart of the game it you can clearly see the passion and like the fun ideas that the developers had that they wanted to put in this and it really all shines through just the world itself like here's this cool little place you get to inhabit and here's some stuff that we think will be fun to do and we're going to do it and that's the game and it's just yeah it just it works it works it was it was delightful this is the first game i think of any of our game of the month clubs that i finished early uh, because <laughs> i was excited to play it every time i was like yeah i want to finish this up i know it's a short game but i want to play it and like i'm enjoying myself so well I, the only game i have no that's not true i never finished golden sun i don't ever intend to <laughs> i never will. i will finish chrono trigger i'm almost done with it Good. And I finished almost everything else. Bellatro, I don't know that you'll ever finish it, you but finish I, actually, it. dude, I'm a madman. I may actually beat Bellatro by the end of the year. You're gonna get <laughs> like all the. All you're the, gonna finish all the packs and unlock everything. I have. I'm like halfway through all the challenges. I've finished every single deck. I finished most of them, like half of the because you can go up to like ten challenge levels. I've I've finished a few of them all the way to ten, but I finished most of them like up to half. I I'm obsessed with that game. You're insane, but I respect you. <laughs> that I guess that's my games as a service game. That's yeah, my Bolatra. lifestyle game. <laughs> uh, unlock new challenges, add new mechanics. I'm in. Yep. Um, all right. So then, looking at our game of the month for August, I'm excited about this, as I always am. Usually, uh, Portal Two. Dude, not the first one. Portal Two. We both have it. Uh, you have it on Switch. I have it on Steam Deck. It was on, it was Portal One and Two were on sale for two dollars, and I was like, "Well, I should just buy that probably." <laughs> I think I have Portal th- Two on PS3 as well. So I had it on the original uh, Orange Box on Xbox 360. No, uh, that was Portal One. Oh, Portal Two was separate. You're right. Forgive Portal me. Portal Two was separate. Yeah. Um, but I, I played had, it both. I had the Orange Box too. Yeah, dude. I never played Portal Two uh, more than an hour or two, so I'm really excited to get this one on the list. This game club has been really pivotal for me and like cleaning up some games that I've like top 100 games I never finished or played like with Chrono Trigger and um, Portal 2 Portal 2 should be beyond good and evil Golden Sun Castlevania Symphony (laughs) of the Night yeah true we've we've hit some good ones yeah and by the way update I finished Prince of Persia to not only did I beat it I beat like I got every single collectible in the game I have 96 percentage on my game file I don't know what else counts for percentage because I have like every upgradable item. I have every could be relic. just like map exploration. Yeah, you hit maybe like every room. Maybe that's it. I need to look into it, but I think there's some DLC, so I might pop back in. I really well, how do like you sit that now? Game as well. Yeah, I'm I'm higher on it than I was before. I can't remember what I gave it in the past. I'm still I'm going to give it a four because I mean it maybe yeah I'm going to give it a four out of five. Because I feel like the level design, while mechanically incredible, there's just a lack of like visual flair in a lot of the levels. And that never comes really into focus till the very end. You have this incredible level. One of the coolest levels I've ever seen in a video game oh. where you're in the middle of a storm, but time has frozen. And it was the it was a battle between like two different ships. And so you're you're like weaving in and out of this action set piece that's been frozen in time and 
all of a sudden you trigger something to make everything come back to life. And it's, you've been playing it for like an hour and you're just like, Oh my God, it was just such a cool moment. And there's so much cool stuff that happens there, dude. So, mm. um, it was very, it reminded me the only thing that I could even put it on its level is Donkey Kong tropical freeze. As far as like a level, just like blowing my mind where they put so many different pieces in place yep. and it felt like as triple A as anything you see in 3d. But Dang. because I saw that, it actually made me think about all the other environments I'd been in. I'm like, dude, everything else is kind of boring, <laughs> you know, like compared to this. <laughs> this is great. I want more of this. Also, yeah. I didn't like the music very much. Yeah, um, music wasn't. And cool. overall, I just think that the, uh, we talked about this before, but like in two years, what am I going to remember about this game? I think a lot of the characters will fall out of my memory, but what will stay is just the tight mechanics, the tight platforming. I don't know if that's enough to give it a five, but it is yeah. so, so fun to so play. Good. Yeah. Perfect. Great. I'm glad you made it all the way. I don't know if I ever will, but I, hearing your review makes me at least want to check it out again. Fair. All right. And now it's time to jump over to our last segment. Oh, yeah. Name that game music. Um, okay, so Landry and I uh, if you have not heard this segment before, we pick two uh, songs from video games and we play them for the other person in hopes that they will guess them. And based on how well they do, they get 20 points. And then if they need hints, uh, you, you knock off five points each time they ask for a hint. Uh, and so the hints are genre, console, and first initial of the game. And so the hope is that we can always guess these because we've had a few we're, we've we've kind of built this game out as the podcast has gone on. Uh, so we're I think we're at a good place now, and I'm excited about this every time we play it. It's always fun. So Landry, you're up first. Are you ready? Let's hear it, man. Let's go. I've got my headphones cranked. I want to try and turn the sound up just a little bit for you. Oh, so no. Here. Turn it, turning my headphones down. Okay. Dude, that is a gut punch. Two. Odyssey. Super Mario Odyssey. Yes. We're like, we just finished the black and white world. We're like heading to the, wait. This is title theme, right? It's so good. It's so good. The music's so great. Um, it is very good. It is Super Mario Odyssey. You are correct there. Um, and it's like the it's like the title theme, but like I feel like the first time it hits is like after you know you've gone through the black and white world and everything, and you're like in that little electric thing, and then it's like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, technically, this is the dinosaur area, the fossil falls. So level. I'm right. I'm right because you remember that's you go from the black and white world, and you go to the little wire, and then you go to the. Is the, the dinosaur, dinosaur the one next? Okay, yeah. yeah. I was like, I don't remember exactly where you land at, but yes, you freaking got it, brother. Dude, I just played that uh, probably a month ago. So I haven't, I have just not that played one it area. since it came out in 2017. Oh, man. I 100%ed it, got every single moon, and I just never touched it again. I did the same thing, and then I played through it again like two years later, and then I played through it again like two years later. Now, <laughs> <laughs> me and Sawyer played play every once in a while now. Played so. it a lot. All right, well, hey. Yeah, Good start, brother. 20 points for Landry. All right. right. This is mystery tune number seven. I'm going to turn this up a little bit too for myself. All right. Here we go. Part where I can't hear. Oh, sorry. Play. (laughs) This is so intense. (laughs) So intense. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this is so like demonic. It's wild. Oh man. I 
I have no idea what that is. What? Really? <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Um, I am like 90% sure you played this. It sounds like it sounds like a Nintendo game of some kind. Um all right, so give me a, give me my first hint. Okay, what's our what's the first one again? Genre, console, and first initial. So genre, first... platformer. Okay, platformer. Okay, if it's a if it's a platformer, I'm just gonna guess that it's probably a, a Nintendo platformer. That's not from Mar- Mario Odyssey. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> um, nothing was that insane. Um, but it probably is a Mario game. So what else came out? What a Mario game? All right, give me the console. Console Switch. Oh, Switch platformer, Mario. Oh, um, see, this is probably why I didn't get it Im- immediately because um, I didn't. I didn't really didn't play it that much. You, I think you let me borrow this. Is this um, the Bowser's Fury? It is. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't know you didn't play that. It's Bowser's Fury. I'm assuming it's when Bowser shows up or like it when, is. Like when giant the, Bowser the, shows up. The giant Bowser, yeah. That's, Holy that's his smokes. theme music. That That is so much more intense than I remember it being. <laughs> it's like Godzilla has come. Yeah, it is uh, it's really epic. That's horrible. <laughs> I So yeah, I, I you let me borrow that and I played it maybe for like two or three hours. Like enough to like encounter him like once or twice. And I... Yeah. You know, you run around, and you try to find the bell or whatever to hit, and st- I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't even remember the mechanic to be honest. Dude, I'm gonna be 100 percent real with you. I was very, very surprised when people celebrated that game so much. Mm. The Bowser's Fury portion. Mm-hmm. They were I big replayed, into it. Uh, yeah, everybody loved it. I thought it was okay, but kind of uh, annoying. It was like. If Breath of the Wild had the red the red moon, but it just hit like every fifteen minutes and disrupted yeah. all of your gameplay constantly. That's how I felt too when I when I played it. I was like, this every is kind of annoying. Rhythm, I was like, this sucks. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of annoying. I liked that it was like the three D world like style, like open, just running around. Your platforming as Mario, but that all felt good. But then like yeah, when Bowser showed up, I was like, dude, I don't want to do this. I don't want to turn into yeah. Cat Mario and fight him every single time. Like this. Is, I had some qualms is... with the openness of it as well. Even I thought some of the objectives were a little. Bland. I felt a lot of times where, where I was like, okay, I know I'm here. I know, I kind of know what I want to do, but like, just what am I actually supposed to do? You know, I don't want to have to think like a Zelda game, solve a mm. puzzle or like find the next objective. Like I just want to do some hardcore platforming and get the heck out. Okay. Yeah. Cause that, that game, like, I don't know how I knew that it was something Nintendo because of, just there's like still, a, even though it's so epic, there's still like a whimsicality to it, you know? Yeah. There was like the theme of burr, burr, burr. like I think I heard the Bowser theme like oh, now that I I'm thinking back on it, but I'll listen to that again. That was <laughs> that really threw me for a Dude, loop. I was like, what is this? I haven't heard that song on with like headphones or anything, but yeah, the I was chanting. just kind of clicking through some <gasps> songs and I was like, Dude, this is hitting so hard. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one for you. This one. How many um, points did you get for that though? Cause ten. you had two hints, right? Okay, yeah. Two cool. hints. So 10 points. Gotcha. All right. I'm going to give you, uh, no hints on this one. Actually. I'm just going okay. to to figure it out. Okay. You might get it immediately. So we'll see. I know I'm in some weirdo's house right now. <laughs> This is, this is uh that like redheaded brute theme song from Skyward Sword. What's his name? Uh, hold on. A, oh man, you know what I'm talking about. You know I'm right. I just can't think of his name right now. I'll like give it the, to you. Even if you can't get his name, I'll give it to you because okay, you are correct. Uh, it's like I want to say Garth, but I know I'm wrong with that. Garth, uh, <laughs> Groos is his name. Groos, that's right. Yeah. And funnily enough, I believe it is the same exact theme. The it's the pirate theme from Wind Waker. Really, I believe. I'll fact check that after Interesting. this. Interesting. But I noticed it when I was playing Wind Waker. I was like, this I think is the same exact theme as Groos's theme. 
So, dude, Groose, what a character, man! He had what a, a good redeem. He had a, a good arc. You know, he came he in as a ding dong, and he ended up coming in <laughs> at the end and helping everyone out, and it was great. Yeah, but he still like fumbles his way into helping everyone out. He does know, in a lovable way. But his um, there's I think there's a in Skyward Sword there's a version near the end like Nintendo loves layering themes on top of other themes and like making it mm-hmm. a new composition, and I, I'm pretty certain that Groose's theme gets overlaid with like something else happening that is heroic and it actually like it works perfectly it's like a really yeah. really good composition and i was like dang Nintendo's Dude, awesome. so good at this they are well even like i was looking for luigi's mansion 3 music so and good the it is so good it's so underrated and clicking through that like there is not i don't even think they have a luigi's mansion 3 theme in that game but every level takes the theme and just like manipulates it and, mm-hmm. and does something really weird with it and sometimes it's actually hard to find in there you know it's just like oh there it is i this see it minor I, I key change it yeah. or this or you, you tuck it's it so behind cool. this on a harpsichord instead yeah it's just so <laughs> smart man oh, oh, incredible i would love to be on just in one of the rooms when they're making the music yeah I'm just like how are you going to use this uh, all right uh my turn mystery tune number eight let's see here let me turn this up also Mm. This is Cuphead. Well done. For sure. But it, I mean, is this just like the overworld? Is this just like you walking around? Yeah, overworld. It's the first overworld, that first little carnival area. Okay, okay. I guess there are multiple overworlds there. Um, dude, it's, it's, it's so good. World one, dude. Cuphead's soundtrack is incredible. That whole game is incredible. The fact that that exists is so cool. Yeah. That, well, yes, I agree. I guess the whole game is incredible. It's so... I just am really annoyed that I can't beat it. So I, I haven't beaten it either. I'm I have on the very last boss, and I just like... I gave up. I was like, I know I can probably beat this Actually, if I dedicate enough time to it. I, was like, I didn't but, hit a wall. I... I guess I did in a way, but the last boss I played was the final boss of World 2, and there's three worlds, as I remember. Mm-hmm. And... I, w- I got beat so many times by that second boss. I was just like exhausted when I finally beat it. It felt like I'm not having a, fun. Like a huge victory, but I also was like, okay, I don't even care. I'm not playing anymore right now. <laughs> and I felt like it was a game because I love the art style and I love the music so much. It's like I'm going to come back to this at some point. I just never did. Yeah, so. that's kind of that's kind of what happened to me. Even when they made the new DLC, like the delicious last chorus, I was like, oh, that's cool. I was like, I don't want to just get my ass kicked like over yeah. and over and over and over again. Zero, <laughs> zero. Uh, desire to ever play that, and I heard it was harder. So, no, thank like it's, you. I have more patience and, I guess, ability to play something like Dark Souls or Elden Ring. Same, and maybe it's because it's easier, or maybe it's just because I feel like Elden or not Elden Ring. I feel like Cuphead is really just like you have two hits and you're dead, and that's it. And it's pattern memorization. Like you have it to memorize pattern. every single level. And you're going to die multiple times every single level. And the, the whole point of the game is to die so much that you memorize where every jump is, how you need to defeat every single boss or every single enemy. And then right. it's just, yeah. It's pattern. Is, it's yeah. And I guess, I don't know. I don't know how it's different than Elden Ring or Dark Souls or Bloodborne. Cause Elden Ring, you can heal. Elden Ring, you can heal yourself yeah, multiple times. That's so true. You can run away. You can. Yeah. Now that you say it, like there's definitely. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely ways to cheese Elden Ring as well. There's ways to right. cheese Dark Souls and Bloodborne. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's like most of those battles, you can get hit four or five times. In, or, or you, you can, can level go up. grind. Yeah, yeah, you can go grind and eventually come back and whoop that dude's ass. But in Cuphead, yeah. <laughs> you're the same, you, no matter yeah. what. You can you can kind of level up. You can like add in, add on different abilities or power-ups but there's definitely ways to go in with like optimum setups but there's no way that you're going to get once you get to the end of world two and three you're in for a tough challenge no matter what yep and and the reflex you have to have really quick reflex perfect timing on everything i am like what i was really bad at was getting those perfect timing little the jump pink things yeah yeah the jumps off of like enemies yeah like the the last boss the devil is like all of that like to dodge any of those attacks, you have to like time multiple of those those jumps in a row where you you um 
essentially counter off of his own attacks and you're like this is hard like this sucks yeah yeah it's tough (laughs) so good choice though good choice in songs great soundtrack though hey we did pretty well we did pretty well i'm surprised we got i'm I'm surprised you got gruce's theme because i was like that one's pretty vague like that one is pretty removed i'm I don't know if you know this, but I'm something of a Zelda nerd. So <laughs> no, I know I know this. <laughs> I, I picked two of like the most iconic games for you, at least. Uh, but Mario Odyssey, even too. I guess that is like one of the first songs, and I remember being playing Mario Odyssey and being blown away by that song when it first Dude, came yeah. on. I was like, it's oh so yeah, great. I was like, this is gonna be a good game. Can't wait. Yep. Well, unfortunately, all that ends our podcast. Listeners, how did you feel about July? You got any songs for us you want us to play on Name That Game Music? Send them our way to bitcast at bitbloggers.com or on socials or on Spotify or wherever you listen on YouTube. Put them in the comments. We are seeing those. We've gotten some suggestions for Halo again, Landry, for a, a different Halo. We've gotten <laughs> suggestions for on. Elden Ring, actually. Uh, so a few a few titles we can potentially sneak in there. So keep sending those. Those are always fun to see what you guys recommend. Uh, Landry, thank you so much, as always, for your time. Um, anything you want to plug or mention where people can find you on the internet? No, man, I'm, I'm going to plug the month of August as it's going to kick me in the butt. <laughs> it's yep. a lot going on. So, yep. August is here and, uh, summer is, summer is still, still hot yep. and, uh, school's starting up for a lot of people. So <laughs> it only begins now, but, uh, yeah, this has been fun. And uh, I look forward to talking to you all about Portal 2 next month. Until next time, this has been BitCast. Thanks for tuning in to talk about some stuff.